my grandfather moved to Stowmarket in 1910 and set up and built a brand new foundry to service the local engineering companies. And he eventually met a man called Kaufman who had an order to supply hand mowers to a London store called Gamages. But he hadn't got a supplier for the mowers. And the two men came together. The business of Suffolk Iron Foundry needed capital to expand. They set a target to make the first petrol-powered cylinder mower uh, based on a selling price of something like £20 a machine. They bought engines from America and just got on with it, and it became a, a great success. And at that time, there would have been um, the housing, the government would have been going through a housing development project to rebuild houses after the war. They all had small gardens, and everybody wanted a small petrol engine. Ourselves, back in 1954, I think it was, came out with the very, very first of a breed of, of Suffolk horses, uh, it was the Suffolk Colt that came on the scene first, back in 1954, a 12-inch version. Then we went to 14 inches, it became the Suffolk Punch, and since then there have been 17-inch and 19-inch versions. And the Suffolk Punch is still made today, almost 50 years later. And perhaps the, the Suffolk Punch is, is probably the world's best-known uh, lightweight petrol-powered cylinder mower. From a, the point of view of a small petrol driven lawnmower, there was no doubt about it, Suffolk Punch was out there at the front. The Suffolk Punch, I think that was amply said, was the first affordable. Every man and his dog knew someone who had got one and aspired to, to buying one. There was something like £15.15, £15.75 in today's money. Uh, 15 guineas in the old money in the 50s and yeah it was something to, to strive towards it, it stays in the family sometimes it's a hand-me-down dad buys the new one son can have the old one that sort of thing so yeah it's a tremendously popular lawnmower <laughs> Stop run from Edinburgh to London, a distance of 375 miles as the haggis flies, Tom did the first stretch, and the mower, a matador, leapt from stone to stone along the streets. The mower did about five miles to the pint. We cruised at four miles per hour across the cold, misty hills. As the clock struck three, the waiting crowds in Hyde Park welcomed us at the end of our epic 375-mile journey. Everyone was interviewed and congratulated, except the mower, which went off in a huff to get on with the grass cutting. This is a 1947 Ransom's Lightweight 14-inch cut with a set of carrier wheels for manoeuvring over paths. But at the end of the day, for all that sophistication, we are still turning that red thing near the ground called the cutting cylinder and the cutting cylinder is crossing the bottom blade and we are literally scything or scissor action cutting the grass. Budding's original invention had started a revolution but it wasn't the only way to cut grass. Mr. Hater, Doug Hater as we refer to him, he was a builder, uh, building actually on this site here in Spellbrook, Bishop Stortford, uh, temporary buildings for, for, the, for use at the end of the war. Uh, and he had timber drying sheds here, which were creating a problem for him because the grass was growing in between them. Uh, and being a sort of innovative type of fellow that he was, he decided to get something that would cut the grass for him and he got a dustbin lid which is a thing that people with wheelie bins probably don't know about nowadays but he got a round dustbin lid he put four wheels in the corner of uh, his round dustbin lid if you get four corners in a dustbin lid uh, and he put a two-stroke motorcycle engine on it uh, and adventurously cut the grass in between the drying sheds and that was so successful that one or two people who saw this, decided that they would like one of these too, and that was really how he got into lawnmower. So from a builder, he became a lawnmower manufacturer on this site here in Bishop Stortford. We still have 
in the company, the first one that stamped H1, Hater 1, uh, of that model, and it certainly is round, and you can see the dustbin lid shape from that. But yet, 50 years on from that, we're still manufacturing a product which is essentially exactly the same. The molds may have changed, the casting is, is slightly different, but the whole principle of the machine is exactly the same as it was all these years ago. From the design that comes from the computer-aided design, we actually start seeing metal coming into the factory. And there are various processes that start probably with turning metal or cutting metal or punching holes in metal. But they go through the various stages where the rollers put on and the engines put on the cutting deck and the wheels are put on and the height of cut adjustments put on. And eventually, all these things are tested at the end of the line to make sure that they're working and the product goes into a cardboard box and from there out to the warehouse and from thence uh, on into the marketplace itself where hopefully another satisfied customer will be very happy with the product. On the other hand, we have some commercial product as well, which is built in a very small batch process, uh, and that batch process means that we probably only build 10, 15, or 20 machines of any one type at a time, but it is fairly labor-intensive because it's a very complicated product. Generally, our customers are very discerning gardeners. They're ones who know what they want, they are very keen on their garden, like to have a formal finish to the lawn with stripes, light and dark stripes, and a machine that they can rely on. Uh, and we believe that they are the creme de la creme, if you like, of the gardening population. A rotary with an 18-inch cut and provision for collecting the grass is a machine always in great demand. Mounted on a lightweight aluminum chassis, is a powerful four-stroke engine which is provided with a cutter disc and two fold-back cutters. The cylinder is, is two blades cutting like scissors, whereas rotaries and hovers is a slashing action. So you get a bit of a tear on the grass rather than a cut. Paper, scissors, paper, slash with a ruler, and you can see the difference. And, of course, people who really care about their lawns know this and buy a cylinder lawnmower. One of the outstanding achievements of Ransom's design engineers has been the development and perfection of the self-contained, power-driven, versatile gang mower, the Motor Triple. Meanwhile, sport, the driving force again, led to the development of the super mower. thing having a good grass cultivar there to develop but you do need a good mower to get it to grow in the way you want it to grow. Uh, each mower it will, will give you a different job. We have mowers here with a lot of knives on the cylinders and we work on the theory that the more knives the tighter the cut you get which produces this carpet like effect on the pitches and uh, the ransom mowers we use do give us that. Uh, it's got to be reliable because we've got to use them every day of the week, Saturday, Sunday included just now and we do that for about five months. Then it's usually about uh, three times a week on from there through the remainder of the season. I mean, I'm very much a traditionalist. At uh, Portman Road, we use the hand pedestrian mowers and the Ransom, Ransom's massive 36-inch machines. The hand mowers that have been designed for, for mowing football pitches are designed to give a little bit of weight through the back roller to, get, to give the, the pitches that little bit of level and just to firm them up that bit to give them the pace when they're played on. Uh, the ride-on mowers come from a traditional golf background and in golf you're looking to spread wear and weight on the greens so therefore these units are actually spread they're not actually applying a lot of weight although they give you a fine cut they won't apply a lot of weight to the ground where the, the hand mower does so it, uh, it's a bit of tradition that uh, i still use that the, the hand mowers down there like, and they give you a lovely finish it takes a bit of time but it's, it's well worth the wait to cut football pitches um, in the same manner that alan does he requires a machine like a mastiff to give the sort of finish that he wants there are still private users within the marketplace who are prepared to walk behind a mower of that type who still like to get that sort of standard of finish.
I couldn't put one together myself, to be honest with you, but yeah, I'm very interested. That's not true, is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Can be a bit difficult at times working with all men, but I go in and bear it and give them as good as what they give me. We haven't got a lawn mower at home. Got no grass. <laughs> I've got an Ajax mower at home, and um, when we, they were one of the first um, lawn mowers that Ragsons used to make many years ago, probably even before I was actually born, but, and it's still going very well. I now declare the William Bone and the Ransom Story Exhibition open. At the Stowe Market in the Museum of East Anglian Life, they have a special exhibition dedicated to ransoms. They were such a big name in East Anglia. And of course, a huge proportion of that is made up of the Ransom's lawnmower, including the first ever electric lawnmower made by Ransom's in the 1920s. After some 200 years of existence. I thought that the heritage which the company had bequeathed not only to East Anglia but also to the world ought to be uh, preserved for the future generations perhaps by a, a Ransom's Heritage Trust. They treated um, we apprentices very well indeed. I'd do it all again if I had a chance but I don't suppose I will. Although the history of the lawnmower is fascinating, what's even more incredible is that most of the factories are still based in East Anglia, still producing the majority of the lawnmowers today, and the industry is very much alive and well. The winter show has increased in size and attendance over the last five years. It's been well marketed, and it is the place where most professional users within the country will try and get to. What you've got to do is, that's all you do is hold that back. And the reason why that's one is a safety feature, so you can engage drive. Lloyds and Company Electric Limited started importing mowers from America up until the 1920s. The product was getting more and more expensive, so Lloyds decided that they had two choices, close the doors or started producing the machines here. Uh, that's when we started producing machinery. Probably the most highly regarded of the leader and the paladin, but probably the paladin is particularly well known. That's the machine that cuts most of the wickets on most of the test grounds. The show business is doing very well this year. This is our third year of growth uh, in, in the commercial sector of the market. It's been very exciting and so far we've only a few hours into the show, but the stand has been busy since it opened at nine o'clock this morning uh, and the interest is genuine very encouraging indeed innovation i think is the only way forward we've got to come up with new products or modified products that suit what the customer is actually looking for which is what we've based our development on over the last 15 years Whatever the future holds for this most British of inventions, there's some traditions that always stand. Oh, there we are. The game of bowls, the pint in the country pub, and one last chance to mow the lawn before the sun sets. Another year.